And we're back. What's up, everybody? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. What's up, Billy? Hello. Billy, <laughs> the anxiety Jedi cross from Anxiety United. UK. Decaffeinated. Decaffeinated. Decaffeinated Jedi this time. Yes, Billy five days. Five days without caffeine. I'm, I'm impressed and feeling good. Feeling more awake, feeling more alert. But I thought caffeine was supposed to have the alert and awake. You know, that yeah. was the side effect of it. But actually stopping it has had a completely different effect. I don't know whether it will continue. Ask me next week. We're going to call probably, it a... I'll yeah. be drinking like espressos. And <laughs> knocking back all kinds of Red Bull. An espresso with a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> just, just intravenous drip right into the arm. Mm, mm. Yeah, I'm not a caffeine guy. I can't do caffeine. It upsets my stomach too if I drink too much caffeine. It's bad for you. It's bad, bad for you. It's bad. I thought I'd give, give myself another chance. We was on about it last week with the lifestyle choices and that. Yeah. I thought there's nothing you know caffeine's not a good thing so let's see all these steps i'm taking every week by the end of the year I'm yeah gonna be fine you're gonna be like running marathons <laughs> yeah. under the british olympic team <laughs> british maybe team, maybe. maybe if they bring darts in maybe that's the only one i could probably keep i, he- I heard they're gonna do that yeah just for oh, right. yes. <laughs> so i read it on the internet so it must be true it's got to be just a, a quick uh, caffeine or related story. The gym that I used to go to, I switched gyms a while ago, and there was a guy I used to see all the time, and you could tell he he was every once in a while you would see that he was he had anxiety issues for sure. And I talked to him one day, and he used to have panic attacks sometimes in the gym. Except that he would go to the gym. He's one of these like hardcore guys, hardcore, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he'd go to the gym and he would drink a pre workout. So any people listening may understand what a pre workout is. These stupid drinks and powders and stuff yeah, that you yeah. buy in supplement stores. And this, the pre-workout, it's just jam-packed with caffeine and, like, beta alanine, which is another, like, major stimulant. And he would wind up – it would literally make half his face numb, which is a, a known <laughs> side effect of beta alanine. So people have a slight out. It's not dangerous. Sounds but fun. So this guy would had serious anxiety problems, and he would hop himself up on this pre-workout. And I remember thinking, man, why are you doing that to yourself? <laughs> Got to get the pump, man. <laughs> wow. All right. More power to you, brother. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, I always get a kick in a scene. Like, I haven't seen him in a yeah. couple of years since I switched gyms. But anyway. Uh, Dear. Okay, before we get off topic too much, today we're going to continue our discussion of exposure therapy. And uh, yes. Jackie, if you are listening, which I know you are, we're going to answer your question now, which I promised we would do last week, but then we got sidetracked because we were ill and talked about that. Yeah, yeah. How are you so, feeling this week anyway? I'm good. My ear's still a little plugged, but you know, it is what it is. That's oh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm improving. I'm good. Good. No sniffles. Good. That's what I like to hear. We so, survived. Yes, we did survive. Contrary to like... Yeah, you know, whatever, pop in that popular opinion, but <laughs> what your brain may have been telling you, we have survived. Mm. So let me go into my inbox. I want to look at Jackie's um, message that she had sent me. Essentially, the question was: We talked about exposure. If anybody hasn't watched sort of our first discussion of exposure, you should do that. Episode thirteen was it thirteen? Yeah, well, we should. Uh, it was just kind of an overview of what exposure is, and, and especially what to expect out of it. You know, having good expectations going in. But Jackie brought up a good question after we published that video, and that was. How do you make progress with tasks that you can't really practice every day? And she specifically talked about flying, like getting in an airplane and flying. Yeah. Um, it's not like you could just decide to jump on a plane and fly around, you know, every day mm-hmm. to practice mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So, so she, she asked, you know, how do you deal with that? Um, you know, how, how do you do things? How do you practice things that you can't necessarily practically practice? Practically practice. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. And it's just, I think, an extension of, of the whole exposure situation. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess I'll kick that off in terms of... Um, well, you've, you've flown. I have flown. <laughs> I, fly, I fly now. Boy, my arm's tired. <laughs> so, oh, um, it's a good question. The, uh, oh, here's Jackie's question. Just taking me long to get it up. Um, she says, my question is related to recovery. I find I am doing pretty well with my small stuff, such as food shopping, shopping lines out to eat, traffic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, things I can't get a lot of exposure on, such as going to the dentist or the doctor, or flying in an airplane. Um, I find I wish I could practice the stuffings, uh, I'm censoring, out of these things and beat them, but I have no opportunity since they tend to be once or twice a year things. Mm-hmm. And so she's asking, you know, how do you do that? Um, so I'll talk about, th- those are good things, like going to the dentist, going to the doctor. It's not things we do all the time. I'll talk about flying specifically, because yes, I, I have been flying again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, Here's the general answer to that question that we can maybe dig a little deeper. And I don't know if you have a few of these as well. But for me, I mean, I've always, I have never been a fan of flying. I, I have flown, but I don't like it. I've never really liked it. 
Um, actually, I kind of like it now, as crazy as that sounds. And I'll yeah. tell you how that happened. I mean, so if I go back to my worst anxiety days and when there was some agoraphobia there and, and think it was difficult just to get out the door, the idea of getting on a plane and flying somewhere, I mean, you might as well tell me to go to the moon. You know, just, mm-hmm. it wasn't in the realm of possibility in those days, or it didn't seem like it was anyway. And it's not like I was able to practice flying because I really only started flying again in the last year. And um, what I could say is the exposure work that I did and getting to the point where I could live a pretty normal life, even though I wasn't flying at all because I didn't, I didn't really need to. Uh, mm-hmm. Plus, I was still sort of hanging on to that phobia. I don't want to. I don't like it. I'm afraid of it. When the time come, when the time came, and I said, "That's it. I have to start doing this because I'm not going to be stuck here in New York forever. I got to actually be able to do it." It was. I'm not going to say it was super easy, but it it became really easy, and it's just because of the spillover. So, in improving my overall anxiety situation and working on just getting out the door back in 2008, mm-hmm. 2009, mm-hmm. to where I am now and living a pretty normal life, it became easy to tackle that task just because of the spillover from everything else that I've worked on. I don't know if that yeah, makes we, any sense. We, talk, we talked about it on the list that I made, didn't I, with the five things. Remember when I reached the fifth and I yes. was able to do that? Yep. It had had a, a rebound effect and I was able to do so much more. It opened up so many more doors because it's not the task that you're challenging. It's the feelings, isn't it? Once that, you start to accept that you feel like that. That's exactly because, right. Yeah, yeah, that is exactly right. So in the end, what you start to learn as you go through this process of, of exposing yourself to the things that make you anxious is it's not the task. Like you said, it's not the supermarket or in Jackie's case, the traffic or driving for me it was driving. It's not that it's how you feel when you're doing it. So when you learn not to care, look at the sunlight shining through again. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm expecting an angel to come through the window. They will have an angel Jeez. as a guest in the next podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Sorry. But, yeah, it's all right. No big deal. I would say that for me, uh, when you when you use your exposure to learn, ex- the reason why you do exposure is not so much you can get back to the supermarket, although you need to go to the supermarket. It's so that you can learn to not care, right? I'm going to mm-hmm. reiterate mm-hmm. that. And people mm-hmm. say, "Well, will exposure make my panic go away?" Ultimately, it will, but that's a secondary step. First is you, you will learn not to care whether you panic or not. Yeah, yeah. So for me, when I was time to get back on an airplane and start flying around, which now I've done quite a bit of in the last six or eight months, um, especially this year, is, you know what? Maybe I'll have a panic attack on the plane, but, or maybe I won't, but I don't care. Mm. Or in the that's airport. That's the difference. I don't care. Yeah, I just yeah. don't care. Right, exactly. Mm. So, so that, that's how that works. And I think the same thing with going to the dentist or the doctor or things you don't normally do. Do you have, have any of those that, you know, you were talking about your five things. You got to the point where I could do this. What else What else happened? They were really trivial, the five things for me. They were small things like post box, walking to the local shop, the supermarket, stuff like that. But right. there's one thing that really sticks out. And when you, because you mentioned this question last week and it was my wedding. So that obviously that's something that you can't do. Well, nope. I suppose you can, but some, I don't intend Some people to. practice it. Really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like the build up to the wedding was probably something along those lines you know the anticipatory anxiety the right. build up for months in advance and it's just how do you get through that but the the simple answer for me was that i just did yeah and it was just, it was easier than i anticipated and i think that's probably a huge part of the battle with these things is just how bad you imagine that it's going to be but when you actually go and do it it's, it's never as bad as you thought it was it, going to be. That's true. The anticipation sometimes makes that worse. Mm. I, will, I will tell you, I keep using flying as an example because it's my example. But um, when it got to the point for me to actually do that, I had, I think, maybe a couple of weeks sort of notice. Like, all right, that's it. This is booked. Yeah, I'm yeah. doing this. And uh, it was – the anticipation wasn't as bad. And I think, again, because my ability to deal with anticipatory anxiety had also been mm-hmm. greatly improved by all the yeah, previous yeah. work that I had done. And, you know, it it matters. And then what I would definitely say is even then, even then, um, how do you practice things you can't necessarily practice? I did it virtually. So when I was ready and it's okay, the flight is booked, that's it. Or even just before the point of committing, like, all right, I'm going to do this. I spent a whole lot of time and, and, you know, the Internet is an amazing resource. I didn't Mm -hmm. buy like a fear of flying course or anything like that. But there's a ton of people on YouTube who are flying aviation enthusiasts who okay. take their, their cell phone and record takeoff and record landing. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. must have watched 100 different videos of people who would record, record a takeoff. It's my least favorite part. 
yeah, and yeah. what it did was it desensitized me to oh the noises this is normal yeah. this is normal this is going to happen next this is going to happen next and as soon as i will a- was able to to go through my head the steps of like we're going to taxi we're going to turn we're going to stop we're going to accelerate we're going to lift off the ground this this gear is going to come up we're going to turn based on mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. where, which way we're going I was able to watch other people do it a lot. By the time I got on that plane, I was very nervous, but I I knew what to expect already. And I was just, this is normal. Yeah, yeah. This is normal. This is normal. This is normal. And it went much better than I ever thought. So when I did that, I think my ability to actually virtually practice flying by watching mm-hmm. other people mm-hmm. do it and acclimate to that was, there's no way I could have done that in 2009 or 2000. I could have never done it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so many of your skills will improve as you do your exposure and the small stuff. It will begin to mm-hmm. lead to larger and larger things. Mm-hmm. So, and I suppose the only way that you can actually know whether you're ready to do it is by actually doing it. <laughs> in the end, yes. Yeah, yeah. In the end. And it was so mm. I, I think one of the things that I would definitely say is for the tasks that you really can't practice because you don't do them all the time, you know, do the best you can. And as you're working on your other things and you become more resilient and more able to learn and even process cognitively as opposed to having to do it. Because when we're in the beginning stages, you could think about going to the post box all you want. Did it really yeah, help yeah. you go to the post box? You had to yeah. actually just do it, right? I had to post that letter myself. Right. But but in the end, as we get better and better at these things, you will make improvements sometimes just by visualizing. As you yeah, build yeah. that resiliency, yeah. you build that skill set. So that helped me a lot. And I remember I, work, I worked, worked on visualization stuff, visiting relatives before. Like yeah. My old therapist, like we sat down, we imagined how it was going to go. Right. And just made things go nicely. And, and just kept working on it. Yeah, and that helped, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. When I went there, I was able to picture how it was going in the visualization, right? And bring bring that to reality now instead of the horrible images that I'd been making in my mind, you know. So right. rather than sitting there worrying about what's going to happen, get there and then think about that. It so was the other way around. The therapist had you visualize a, a good trip. To go yeah, visit, yeah, positive how it's experience. Go. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and then you were able to just play that script out, which, exactly, which is great. And I yeah. think that comes that skill. That's a good skill to learn. I can remember back, you know, when you and I kind of first met, and you knew the struggles I was going through. Mm. I actually got in the car one morning and drove to to the office that I had at the time, that building. And yeah. I, I remember having my little point and shoot camera on the dashboard, and I didn't I didn't speak. I did it in silence, and I just I videotaped it. I recorded it. And I didn't post it anywhere. I didn't share it with anybody. And I kept that on my phone. And I would watch that video again and again and again. And it was me kind of being able to sort of walk myself through that trip, which was literally like an eight or nine minute trip. It was so short. Yeah, yeah. But it was hard. But in those days, I hadn't built up that resiliency yet. And mm-hmm. my skill set was still wasn't. It was still building those things. So it helped, but it didn't help that much. Um, but as I get further down the road, those things help more. So you just yeah, get yeah. more and more capable as you do more and more of this work. Mm-hmm. So maybe you're not Jackie, maybe to speak to Jackie directly, maybe you're not going to the dentist, but when you go to the supermarket or you stretch yourself beyond the supermarket and take a trip to a movies or something, go see a movie in a different town that you've been at, that it will actually help you get to the dentist in the end. Mm-hmm. You know? So I think that's the answer. That's the answer to this question. There's spillover. You just have to keep yeah, doing yeah. the work, keep doing the work. And what I would definitely say, and I know I feel like I'm rambling now, is you can't – Shut up. <laughs> shut up. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> you can't be satisfied with like, okay, this is fine. I can get to the school. I can get to the, to the post box. I can get to my yeah, office. Yeah, like, you can't – if you just stop there, then your progress mm. kind of tends to stop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So – I mean, I was thinking, I was, I was thinking about the the flying thing, and then there, there may be so many different things. Like for, when I think about flying, if we're on the subject of flying, yeah, it's sure. it's not just the the flying. In fact, I'm not really scared of the prospect of flying. It's it's the like the check in, the queues, the amount of people at the airport, getting to the airport, and then obviously being enclosed on a plane with no escape. They're yeah. the kind of things that I would imagine. So it's not really a fear of being up in the air. Right. It's more a fear of those things that I already associate with my anxiety wherever I am. Yeah. So it's not specifically flying for me. Okay. Well, actually, that's good because along the lines of this conversation, as you work on those things. Yeah, yeah. That's why I would imagine that if I can deal with standing in a queue in a supermarket, it's no different to standing in a queue checking in. 
right we'll there at customs. the airport. Exactly. With 50 million fags in my suitcase. <laughs> Uh, cig- cigarettes in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, that's, that's like a panicky now. <laughs> we're, Whoa, we're we're about to have a boycott. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But you know what? It, that would get better. But what I tell people all the time too is ex- exposure is incremental. Oh, like before. Yeah, oh, yeah. To bleep it, we're okay. <laughs> Let's leave it. Let it fly. Um, we can. It's exposure is incremental. So. It doesn't work if you go from zero to 100 miles an hour instantly. So mm. I, I get questions on a fairly regular basis. Like, I haven't really left my house much in the last three months. You know, I go a mile away to pick up my kid from school, and that's it. And tomorrow, I have to go, like, 130 miles away to my best friend's yeah. wedding. I don't think I could do it. Like, well, it's a little late then. So, you know, mm. exposure is a tool that helps you incrementally rebuild these skills and get you back into, like, a normal life. Yeah, yeah. So if you have not been anywhere for the last year and you're going to try and get on a plane next week, you have a – you have a. a giant mountain to climb i admit yeah, yeah. there's no magic thing that's going to make that somehow easy um so i suppose it's wherever you're at with your anxiety so whatever's making you if it's 100 yards down the road and that's bringing anxiety then work on that exactly until yeah because it's that feeling of anxiety that we've got to try and get past yeah so it doesn't matter how far you can go or wherever it is it's when you reach that point of anxiety and panic that's what you need to try and work towards isn't it it is it is. Mm. And as far as the nuts and bolts of, of how it works, it's it's a – I try and generalize it like it's in te- it's time and then distance. For me, wow, what is going on over there? <laughs> it's like sure. somebody turned a floodlight on right outside <laughs> your window. Um, that's amazing. But uh, what, what for me, when I was working on driving, for instance, I had to learn that the formula was not so much distance – but time, mm-hmm. like time, uh, you know, what's the best way to put it? The phone is like time under load, if you will. So I would be able to get in the car and say, okay, well, I, you know, I'm stuck in this half mile radius around the house, for instance. Let me try and get four miles away. No, that wasn't mm-hmm. it. I would try that and it would be really rough to do that. So what, I, what was more effective to me was I'll stay in that half mile radius and I'll just go for time. Because even that half mile would get challenging after 10 minutes. You know, I I would want to return Mm -hmm. back home. So it was time. And then when I got comfortable, I would increase the distance and then increase the time again. And when that was okay, then I would increase the distance. So that's – this is – it's an incremental thing and you have to actually do it. And it doesn't matter what you start at. It might just be standing in front of your – the front door of your house for for 30 seconds. If you can't manage to get yourself off the sofa, then just go into the next room for 30 seconds. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what the task is. And, and as you get better at that task, it's going to carry over to the next task. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think something with what you just said about having like the distance thing, when I was doing the walking during May, when I was going for a walk every day, I'd right. always feel more edgy when I sort of reached the halfway point. So when I was furthest away from home, sure. that became an issue. So I, I agree with what you say. If you can keep base it on time, so right. just being out of the house, because that is enough. Because, I mean, there's times where I can just sit out front in the car and feel on edge. Yeah. So it's just a case of sitting there and riding it out. Right. Be on edge, mm. you know, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's important for us to, I think, say that it's not – we don't mean white-knuckle your way, right? There's a difference. If you're feeling yeah, yeah. maybe edgy in the car, it has nothing to do with, like, just – grinning and you know grace your yourself t- yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's not it you have to learn to just really do the opposite which is the you know just just mm-hmm. let it be there and don't fight it and relax and then in a way it's all about learning to be soft in the face of the onslaught as opposed to being hard in the face of the onslaught i think that's probably one of the most difficult things to get your head around especially in the moment yeah it's completely mm. the opposite of every, what every cell in your body wants to do. Yeah, yeah. You want to you brace, really got, you want to yeah. fight, you want to push back, but really you have to learn to be soft. Mm. And um, yeah, so the, we could do a whole discussion on that, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I think that's that's the very long-winded answer to Jackie's question, the things you can't practice. The question again? The pra- <laughs> I did, it had something to do with table tennis, <laughs> if I remember that correctly. Was it. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I don't know if you have anything you would like to add to that. Or your own personal experiences? Well, I've never flown. Or I have flown, but I was probably about seven years old when I did. And I didn't have anxiety issues. And it was good. And I enjoyed it. And everything was great. The world was a good place. Yeah. That's it. Get you back into a plane, fly here to New York. We'll go and have a beer. We'll video that. It's got to be done. 
It w- that will happen one day. My yeah. lad is desperate to go to America, so. Well, you're always welcome. Come on over. I'm coming. Tell them I said it was okay. <laughs> yeah, I will. Um, let's talk a little bit for a second about your, what you think your, and, and you don't have to answer this question. It just seems like a good discussion to the uh, extension to the discussion. But when do you get to the point where you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm good enough. And then you stop. Do you have examples of when you have done that? This, this is enough. Like I'm, I think probably with that, with the list of five, I, need, I, I know I keep going back to it, but the list of five things like the fifth with the supermarket. And when I reach that, that was kind of, but it honestly, it really felt like it was enough. Right. Like I was going to like theme parks, taking the kids, we were going out for dinner hmm. every other day or whatever, going shopping. There was just, there was still anxiety. I'm not going to say that there was never anxiety because there was. Right. And like in the queue for the checkout, there was still anxiety, but it just didn't bother me. I was at that point where it just didn't matter anymore. Yeah. But there was, there was obviously still limitations. But, I mean, we were even talking about going abroad, like going to France for holidays and stuff like that. So the fact that I was even talking about it, that means that I'd, I'd reached a good place. Yeah. But then it, it was like, it was about three years ago, I think, and my wife's grandma died. And that was what really knocked me back. I don't yeah. know why. It was yeah. just major stressful. And that's what started in the very first place was a stressful experience. So I don't know just major setback and yeah. then i was just i've just basically had to start again from the bottom the only difference this time being that i feel more disheartened because i've already had to do it once and it's right. like oh well if i do it all again and then some something else happens you know there's always that in the back of my mind even though i know it's worth doing it now yeah. it's just like it takes a bit more of a drive to actually try and do something hmm and so that stressful event, I mean, yes, it had stress and emotional stress and everything, which can certainly trigger anxiety. Did it, did you retreat when that happened? Yeah, yeah, majorly. So just they, didn't do it. Yeah, so I just go. stopped doing anything. Yeah, yeah. Right, so there you go. Mm. So yesterday, I was telling you before we went live, I had a discussion with somebody on Facebook um, that sort of revolved a little bit around that theme. That's another thing we could talk about for probably for a whole episode one day. That uh, retreat, you know. So Mm -hmm. as part of exposure, when you're having your bad days and you want to retreat backwards, I'm not going to do it today. Mm. That's a, it's a bad idea. That's just a bad idea. And I know it's it's, people hate when I say that. And I know it sounds really harsh and you know, I'm not trying to just like man up. I'm not trying to just say that sort of stuff, but Mm. it's retreat is a bad idea. When it comes to exposure, it's a bad idea. Yeah, no, it really is. Yeah. I I think. If I give anything to this podcast, <laughs> I am the evidence that that is not a good thing. Because that's what I've always done. Like, you stuck it out. You yeah. went for it, and you gave it everything, and you just kept on doing it. The persistence part. Yeah. Whereas I got to a comfortable place where there were still limitations. Right. And then something else happened, set back, and I'm back down there. And now I've got to do it all again. Yeah. But that's the thing. I'll do it, and I'll, like, go out for breakfast a couple of weeks ago. And I ain't been out since. Yeah. Like I've been, I've been out. I take my son to college like three times a week. But that's just driving, and I've never really had an issue with that. Yeah. But like you know, I'm back there. But I think what, at least in my own experience, what winds up happening is, I don't mean to imply that you have to spend the, every day for the rest of your life out doing crazy exposure yeah, yeah. stuff. You don't. But there comes a point where when you keep pushing it and doing it again and again and again and again, no matter how you feel, no matter what the day was, no matter how crappy that day was, sooner or later you get to the point where you almost don't have to do that anymore and you will maintain mm-hmm. that that level. You know, yeah, yeah. At least I found that. So even in a setback, like the setback didn't put me back to ground zero again because I had spent the time to yeah, yeah. really cement that progress in a way because mm-hmm. it's a tenuous progress. And I, and I find that, uh, sometimes people, when they're doing their exposure work, will you know be really. Ha- and I love success stories. I love to get those messages. Hey, I made it to whatever. We went to the movies last night. I haven't been to the movies in two years. I love yeah, those. Yeah. Those are great. But it doesn't mean that you're now continually able to go to the movies. You better go again tomorrow night if that's a goal. Mm-hmm. And the next night, mm-hmm. and the next night, you spend a fortune on movies. But I think the point is, it 
the progress can be quick, but you really have to keep cementing it. It's like anything else, learning to play the guitar or whatever. You have to keep practicing those scales again and again and again and again and again. Yeah. Even when you think you have it, you don't have it yet. Mm. Mm. So that's the best, you know, I would throw And that's the tricky there. part because that's going against everything that your brain is. is telling you. Yeah, yeah, that's it the is. difficult part. I think that's the part that I've always struggled with is why do that when I can sit here and play FIFA? Yeah, and it's, com and it's comfortable. East Enders. Absolutely. Exactly. And it's comfortable. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, and it, when I remember those days, and, and, and it is comfortable. And sometimes even these days it's comfortable. But you will get to the point where you could take a day off, like regular people do. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm not feeling well. I'm exhausted. I'm taking today off. Lock mm -hmm. yourself in the house, play FIFA all day, and it's just the same thing that regular people would do. Yeah, yeah. And, and it won't have a negative impact on your anxiety situation. And, you, and you'll get there. You just have to keep doing the work mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. cement that progress. So anyway, it was worth throwing out there as part of, I think, answering this question. So it's all about just doing the work again and again and again yeah, over yeah. tenaciously, and then it mm -hmm. will spill over. And, and for Jackie, you'll be able to fly, or you'll be able to overcome that problem much faster than you think you would. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that's that. I mean, you want to move on to some? How long have we been going, man? Let's see here. We've been going for twenty five minutes. You want to take some comments, like we Hell usually yeah. do? Hell yeah! All right, let me get let me get my glasses on so I can see again. I'll take mine off. <laughs> spanner in the works. <laughs> I um I got a lot of good comments. We were talking about uh, episode fourteen, All right? So let's yes. see. The health anxiety. Health anxiety. Yes. Um. Yeah, feeling ill. Uh, well, actually, here's a question that I got. Um, let's talk about Belladonna for a second. I think she's commented on yours too sometimes. I recognize yes. her name. Um, yes, we will. She talked about you guys touched a little on obsessive thoughts. I think that would be a really great topic for an entire video. It's a huge part of anxiety. We should probably schedule that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yes, we will do that. Thanks for that comment. Um, let's talk about a comment that I got from Philip. Hey, Philip. Uh, Hi, Drew. I have really bad anxiety, panic attacks. I'm at the point where I'm pretty much housebound. And this was in response to episode 14. Um, thankfully, I have savings, but that will come to an end at some point. So this is a big question. And again, probably worthy of its own episode. So if you have okay. any opinion or suggestion on working from home, at least until I get a grip on my life, I would really appreciate it. I heard from previous episodes that Billy works from home. What kind of work does he do? I'm supposed to. If it's not an impediment. You want to you want to take that a little bit? I, I know people, so he, he, I guess they have noticed that you have said that you work from home. So about about eight years ago, I just I decided to just give something a try. And so, like the only thing I could really think of, I like using computers and that, so I just went down the web design route. route, route. I'm being American for a minute. Route. Jeez. So yeah, I just, I self-taught web design, just started using different software, putting things together started advertising it locally yeah. just like friends family doing a few websites here and there for people and then started getting paid off it and hey presto that's where we're at now that was like eight years ago so there's many different things that you can do i mean there's whatever it is that takes your fancy i guess i i would always say something that is actually interesting to you because yeah. that's if you don't want to be bored and like, although work's not supposed to be fun, really. Although Drew's having fun at work right now. Look, I'm having a great time at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm technically working right now. But that's it. That's what I did. Web design. Found something that I had an interest in. Something that I wanted to learn more about, yeah. and just rolled with it, and just see where it goes. FYI, eWebs, E W E right, E W E B Z. If you want to add, add me on the PlayStation Network, my uh -huh. username is eWebs. By the way, Billy's okay. really good at it too. So for somebody self-taught, you do a really good job with those websites. Yeah, check it out. So that that's what. Uh, yeah, so that's what if Billy you start did. Your own, that's it. Start your own business from home. I'll do you like super discount. There you go. For any anxious sufferers. So <laughs> that, that's cool. So that's what Billy has done. He's very good at it too. So um, I applaud that. So I'll tell you, you how I answered Philip though. For those of you who are not reading the comments, <clears throat> and this is, I guess, kind of typical of me. I said, hey, Philip, that's a good question. And the, the bottom line is what I, what I essentially told him was, yeah, don't, don't do that. So, and, and maybe we can talk about that a little bit. So you built a reasonably successful little home business doing web design, and you've done some really nice sites that I've seen. I don't, I don't know how much money you've made or not made. That's irrelevant. But you were able to do that, not right? Not enough. Yeah, we can all say that, I think. <sighs> when I was at my worst, when you and I first met, um, you know, I, was, I had the privilege or the luxury, if you will, uh, me being able to run my business a lot of the time from my home. Mm -hmm. That, in retrospect, was a tremendous mistake. 
I would 100% agree. Yes, it was a tremendous mistake. So as much as it seems like, let me just get my bearings, I'll work at home for a while while I'm getting Mm -hmm. my act together, Mm -hmm. yeah, working from home isn't getting it isn't doing anything for to, to get your act together yeah yeah it in my i'm going to speak to my own experience here that was retreat and it was a huge 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 mistake so i struggled and was stuck for much longer than i really had to be because i took advantage of that luxury and said okay i could just you know i could just sit at home well i, I mean when all this first started i probably worked full time for about three years and just made it through every day it didn't really help doing that, but I know that it certainly didn't help when I stopped. That's the point. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I weren't getting any worse when I was working full time for somebody else. I was doing what I had to do every day and I was getting through every day. So I probably would have eventually learned that it didn't really matter whether I was having anxiety or not because I'm still surviving. Right. But then I made the choice to just I just jacked everything in and did nothing for probably about six months. And then I felt like a bum. I was like claiming on the social and stuff and it was horrible and I didn't want to feel like that. Yeah. And that's why I took the step to do something myself. But I know that it weren't the right decision. Definitely yeah. not. I yeah. mean, I still, I look now for full-time jobs, but it's just like, I just can't see how I could, I, I wouldn't want to let a company down right. by like phoning up every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> can't come in today yeah, yeah you know I what i mean you. i have the thoughts that i i know that it's not the right thing to do yeah but i've got myself into such a habit now like eight years in seven eight years in i couldn't do it any other way now but that doesn't stop me from actually expanding maybe getting an office you know yeah and right, then going right. going to work because that's going something that, yeah yeah right, right. Just, just getting out of the house yep yep and i think that's a huge deal so I, I think if you read my comment, those of you follow along and Philip, I'm talking to you. I know it seems kind of harsh to say that, but but I don't. I think it's a big mistake to really look at that whole thing. Well, I'll just let me just rest here. Nothing happens mm-hmm. when we sit still. Mm-hmm. You know, we've talked about this. There's no like immune response that makes your anxiety better when you rest. It, yep. it doesn't. Um, rest is masking it. It's just retreating from it, and it just makes it harder. And what I found is that when I would work at the house. I would. It was. It, I was still almost white knuckling my way through the day. There's two th- two points I want to make about that. Number one was I was always worried that the phone would ring or something would happen that would cause me to have to go. I remember. And, those and you days. remember some of those days, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, I actually remember in our first little group that we had sharing video of that. Like, oh my mm-hmm. god! You're like, I actually have to go to the data center now and and do yeah. something. And it just turned it into this giant mountain of like, this seems, oh my God, because I was retreating from it and I would spend all day worried that something would come up that would force me out of that home office. And that was difficult. And I think the other thing that it it did in the end was, it would have been, it's easy for me to say, just get out there and keep working. And like you said, you worked full time for quite some time and you just got through the day. You just, you just did what you had to do to get through the day. I think your approach would be different now. Like you, you know more now, and maybe yeah, yeah. it's it's not about just white knuck. Let me just make yeah, it. I yeah. got another two hours. I can grit my way through it. You know, the approach is is different, and it, it yeah, yeah, definitely. And I I learned that it was a different approach. I couldn't just go out there and just just be tight and brace mm-hmm. all day long and just I just got to make eight hours. Just got to make eight hours. It wasn't that. It, I told yeah, yeah. You, you would have a different approach now. I think. So when I say Philip specifically, and anybody who's thinking about this, no, don't work at home. Get out there. Get out there is good advice, but get out there in the right way. Yeah, yeah. But, I was going to say like that's not to say don't work for yourself. It's oh, just no, don't no. don't base it at home. Yeah, or yeah. don't don't use that. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot of really great home based business. Home based business. I'm not saying don't yeah. do that. You know, I'm saying don't do that because you feel like, well, let me just retreat back to my home while yeah, I yeah. figure this yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, it's not a don't, good idea. Don't, don't choose your career accommodating your anxiety. Hey, that's exactly right. That's exactly. Yeah. If it happens to be a home based business, great. But then you better get your rear end out of your chair and out of the yeah. house doing other things three and four times a day while you're well, doing your home based business. When I so, sort of about a year into after I'd started, I'd go, I'd have like a call and I'd go and meet clients. Sure. I'd have to go to their offices, and then like over the past probably two, three years since my latest setback, really. Yeah. Like that doesn't happen anymore. I went through a phase of getting them to come to me, yeah. and now it's like if somebody asks for a meeting now, sorry, yeah, can't can't do your job. Find somebody else. That's it's, what that's honestly what kind of happens. It's like if somebody wants to meet me now, I always try and get out of it. 
So I've got myself into that now. I dig myself into these holes and then I have to go through the process again yeah. to get myself back out of it. And it's I know a- the mistakes I'm making. It's just that I'm too bloody stupid to stop making them. Oh, hardly, hardly. And, I, and I think that's, um, yeah, that first decision that says I'm not taking this meeting. And, mm. and I, I can remember very, very clearly getting to a point that it, it helped it helped me start to move forward to a certain extent because I remember very clearly thinking, like, this is not okay. Like, I, yeah. I can't call myself a business owner and an entrepreneur and all these things and retreat from that. Like, I, I'm mm-hmm. missing out on a lot of opportunities because I was in the same boat. Like, yeah. oh, that's a good project, but it's 35 miles away, so I can't – yeah, I don't want to get involved in that. Like, that, yeah. Don't need it. Don't I need just, the money. I started getting angry at that. Like, I'm not – I can't do that. So that mm-hmm. helped That helped kind of get me going. So that's the answer to that. Um, you want to do another one from – that I have real quick? Yeah, man. This is Bob. I'm um, in no rush. No rush. Okay. We, we These are turning into marathons, but that's okay. People seem to be watching. I love it. Um, Bob writes, for me, this is about the health anxiety thing. For me, it starts with a sensation, a shooting pain, stomach pain, jaw, arm, chest pain, palpitations, shortness of breath, and dizziness that leads me to wonder, is this a heart attack? Nothing else. Or how, how it cannot be sometimes else. This can go on for days after the initial sensation, but will be revolving in my head, wondering what it meant. It can also start with a thought, like today is the day I have a heart attack. Mm-hmm. And, and if this thought, this thought will rotate for days on end, leading to large degrees of couch-hugging anxiety. So he doesn't really ask a question. It's more of a comment. And, Bob, thanks for sharing that. Um, does that sound familiar to you at all, health anxiety-wise? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's usually what it is. It's a sensation or a feeling. Like I mentioned to you, my legs have been aching yeah. for the last couple of days. I don't know whether that's a caffeine withdrawal thing. But, like, that's been on my mind. 100% sure. it's been on my mind. It's like, what if? What if it is something? What if? But I'm, not get, I'm not getting like super anxious about it, but it's there. Yeah. It's in the back of my mind. And it's like we've said a thousand times, it's probably experience that's not making me go over the edge. Sure. You know? But if it's something new, if it's a new sensation, whatever it is, it does. It plays on your mind. 100%. Even if it only happens once and it doesn't happen again. Yeah. For a few days. No question, it's going to be like, what if? What if? And I think that plays to the whole, we talked about it in episode 14. It's the health anxiety thing is so much, I mean, it revolves so much around cognitive work as opposed to the physical exposure work. And that kind of leads to Jenny's question from yesterday. So which method is best for getting rid of anxious and fearful thoughts? Quieting the mind or replacing negative thoughts with positive ones? And my answer to that was it's both. Those are two, mm-hmm. those are both skills that you have to learn and you will use them both. And, um, yeah, yeah. I think at first replacing, like in the case of the health anxiety, the what if learning to replace the what if with some other thought is probably the easier skill to learn at first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, yeah. but as you go down the road, you could actually get to the point where you take that what if, just let it go out and just have think nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I mentioned to Jenny is both. They're both the right answer. Just that- I would say, probably, yeah, if you start with the replacement thing, you'll probably reach a point where you yes. just acknowledge whatever it is, and then you can just let it go rather than yeah. the need to replace it. So I'd probably start with replacing. Yeah, and a replacing could be exhausting. <laughs> it could be tiring. Yeah. It's yeah, hard yeah. Work. But you're right. You'll get to the point where you acknowledge it, and you won't need to replace it anymore. Like, ah, eh, you, don't, you don't even think about it anymore. Yeah, it yeah. comes and it goes. Yeah. Mm. So both are good skills that you have to learn. And that were my comments. Those were my comments on episode 14 that came in. I'm, I'm almost fading into the background. Look, it's that freaking it's so bright. bright. <laughs> You're going to wind up in another dimension if the light yeah. gets any brighter. Anybody that. that watches this video, you'll have to wear glasses and put like sunglasses <laughs> lens on the one side. That's so funny. I'm sorry. That's all right. So I'm kind of out of things at the moment. I think that's it. Those are kind of the comments that I got for, sent between now and you know this week and last. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was just reading. Yeah. I got nothing. Wow, no love for Billy. Hmm. <laughs> That's sad. So sad. I think there was a few comments, but most people make um, funny remarks on mine. Maybe they see me as the uh, class clown, oh, please. which I don't mind. I'm happy with that. Well, you started the last video with the book in front of your face, which was really very yes. funny. That was creative. Did I so. did I mention the art this week? Oh, no. Did I mention that? Nope. This is a, uh, my son, because he started college, he got like a gift pack thing, like an introductory, and he got a stress, squeezy heart, and he gave it to me, so that's pretty cool. Very impressive. 
If anybody wants one, they can have this one. <laughs> I don't have any Five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. You could. Will you yeah. sign it at least? Autograph it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, oh, I know what we wanted to mention when this video gets published. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> this took us like how long? I know. Minutes. I just well, the heart reminded me. So when when Crap. we publish this video, because we record on Thursdays and then we upload on Tuesdays, and it will be what day will that be? It will be the 10th, Tuesday the 10th, and it's World Mental Health Day. I wonder who, so, that, who does that. Is like the World Health Organization has declared that? I'm of those not groups. entirely sure, yeah. but it's another pointless day, really. Yesterday was National Boyfriend Day in the U.S. <laughs> really? Really? Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> What's um, your thoughts on the, on the days that they do? Because they do it over here. Like We have a Mental Health Day, and now we've got World Mental Health Day. Do you think it's worth doing my comment is always like every day is mental health day for me kind of <laughs> kind of yeah I, I know we've touched on this before and uh, we'll probably do an episode on social media which will tie into that but mm. um we have a long list of topics to cover on this podcast we need to start writing them down we should we should instead yeah. of making them up five minutes before we go live so <laughs> my thought on world mental health it's not a like it's not inherently a bad thing i guess it's not a bad thing i just don't i always hate that awareness thing like, yeah. well, we need awareness. Well, okay, awareness is fine. And, and I would say this. If you want awareness of your mental health issue, and, and it is anxiety or agoraphobia or whatever it is that we're talking about, panic disorder, and you want awareness of that, let that awareness be so that the people in your life can cheer for you and, like, support mm -hmm. you while you're doing the work to recover. I can't stand it. And, and I'm talking just specifically about the topic that we're on, which is anxiety disorders, right? I'm not talking about people who are suffer from multiple personalities or... Like yeah, yeah. Psychoses. Um, I don't like it when awareness is all about accommodate me. We need awareness. Mm. People need to know how hard this is. No, they don't. They just need to know that you're working on it. So, yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm just, and I know I'm harsh when I say that, but we don't, I don't want awareness. I, people don't need to know that it's, this will knock you to your knees. Like, yeah, it will, but so what? Get up. Mm -hmm. You know, get mm -hmm. off your knees, damn it. Mm -hmm. So, I just don't like the whole awareness thing. I don't. I don't. We're not going to find a cure. This is, we're not trying to raise money to find a cure. Like we know what the cure is already. We just have to do it. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. For people like you and me, that's what it should be. It should be awareness of treatments, maybe, maybe. or impro improving access to treatments. That's the yeah. world. World improving access to mental health treatments day. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Hashtag. That's a big hashtag. <laughs> yeah. Twitter's going to 280 characters, so that's okay. Just we can, say, we can yeah, do we it. Need, <laughs> we need that to hurry up. <laughs> I think one thing that would be great, what, you know what I'd love more awareness of? We should probably spend a little bit more time, here in the U.S. at least, when you're going through school, you're in like middle school, and you have health class, and you'll learn about like sexually transmitted diseases and dental hygiene and exercise and diet. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. It's a cursory review, I think, because it seems like they should do it in the schools. But even a couple of days on mental health would probably be huge to understand what anxiety is, that it's normal, every human being feels it. What's anxiety? What's depression? What do you do when you start to feel that way? Mm -hmm. It would go, a, I think, a very long way if somebody just had three days of middle school that they could maybe remember and like, oh, yeah, I remember when Mr. Green told me this. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to yeah, being yeah. completely bewildered and not knowing what it is and, and running, you know, to pills and mm. I, well, I, a lot, a lot of people are campaigning for it. They're campaigning for it over here to bring it into schools and that. And they should. Just, you know. Like, especially when the numbers are rising. They are That's rising. The they are yeah. rising. So I, I think it's good, especially here. We just had another, unfortunately, a, another mass shooting in the U.S. in Las I've Vegas. Seen it on the news. It's horrible. And when that comes Horrendous. up, aside from the gun issue, which that's not a topic for us, but. You know, it always also leads to discussion of mental health issues because invariably that becomes a thing. Well, it's not about gun mm -hmm. control; it's about mental health, and, and maybe that's yeah, true. Yeah. I don't know, but and then we, you know, we talk about it a little bit, but I don't know. Like just mm -hmm. a, a little bit mm -hmm. of education would probably help people who are in our position a lot. I would say so. Yeah. So you're not Definitely. starting from dead zero. So that's my thought on World Mental Health Day. Don't know. Take it or leave it. Yes, I'm waiting for World Peanut Butter Day. I can get behind that one. Ooh, I'm allergic to peanuts. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm oh, allergic. no, you're not. You I, might be in the time yes. it takes to open the lid. Because <laughs> no, that was it. I commented and said, I mean, I, I said in the last one the for last people one, yeah. to leave their irrational fears. And nobody did. Nobody so it's did. just me. Oh, that's rough. I'll give you one. When I was really, really at my worst, 
I used to have this irrational fear of being the first person to drink out of like another milk, the first milk carton. Right. Like, yeah. Okay. Like, cause what happens in if somebody, case it was contaminated? Bam. That's exactly right. Which is completely yeah. and utterly ridiculous. But those are the thoughts that can stick in your head. I had a really weird that. that I knew because you knew exactly what it was. Right? I did the same. Yeah. But another thing for me was like insect bites. I don't know if you if you ever had that where you picked up an insect bite and this one could be malaria. For sure. You never know. You never know. You never know. Well, there's got to be some mosquito here right now carrying malaria. Exactly. Exactly. Zika, Zika virus. Cover up. That's the tip <laughs> for this week. You know what? If we let those stuff those things take hold, you would just sit in the house like wrapped in bubble wrap all the time. Yeah. You know, it yeah. is what it is. I think I think we have exhausted our topic for today and our comments. <laughs> We've been at it for 44 minutes. It's pretty good. Seems about right for us. Yeah, yeah. So what we'll to figure out we're going to talk about next time. Of as always, if you guys are watching on YouTube, either channel comments and questions are always welcome. Yes. Hit my website, thatanxietyguy.com. Hit Billy's website, anxietyunited.com. Did you? Didn't you just say that? Did I say? What did that? you say? I think did you I, did. I don't know. Either way, that anxietyguy.com, anxietyunited.com. You'll find yeah, us all over social the same. media. Just tweet, type in anxiety, you'll find us somewhere. Tweet at us. Tweet at us, Facebook us, whatever you want to do. I'm busy. I'm playing FIFA this week. Oh. Nobody wants to join me. All right. So I'll tweet at me. Billy will be very busy <laughs> yeah. with FIFA. The new FIFA came out. He's a little bit preoccupied. Yes. Um, I'll put in one little shameless plug. If you do find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash that anxiety guy. There's also... This was just on a whim. We were talking about it before I went on. We were went online. Um, yes. I started a discussion group to go along with the podcast, just because uh, you can. I didn't even know there was a thing on Facebook, and we're up to forty members or so, and there's some pretty decent discussion. Yesterday, we had a little thread going about positive stuff, like tell us your get, let's share success stories. So, if anybody wants to pop over there, everyone is welcome to join. Uh, Where is it? Facebook.com. Facebook.com slash that anxiety guy. I'll link the forum, the discussion group also yeah, in the video yeah. description in case everybody wants to pop in. Everybody's welcome. I'm not selling anything. Just it's a place to chat. How much? Yes. How much do we have? I know. So and that's it. All right. So we will be back We're again done. next week. We are done. We are out of here. Well done, young man. Oh, yeah. We'll see you guys next week. Ta-da. See ya. Well, let me just awkwardly stop the recording. <laughs>